Are you trying to reach a recruiter in the Air Force and you're stuck sitting there going, why is my recruiter ignoring me? This video is for you. I'm gonna try to make this video short and sweet, so I hope you guys appreciate that. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna be talking about four reasons why your recruiter might be ignoring you. Number one, they're not trying to ignore you. Now keep in mind that recruiters in a city or an area, there might only be one or two for that whole area, all those people that live there. So recruiters are gonna be very, very busy because they're constantly talking with dozens of people. Not only are they crazy busy with a bunch of other recruits that are trying to join the Air Force because you're not the only one trying to join the Air Force, but these recruiters are people. They have lives. They might have a family at home. They might have pets. They go on vacation. They have meetings constantly checking emails and doing voicemails and calling people and going to schools and filing paperwork for people that are already in the process. Recruiters have a lot that is on their plate. Sometimes it's only one of them. And when they're trying to put in several people already, sometimes taking on a new person right now might not be the best thing for them. So my advice is have patience and some perseverance and just keep at it. If you really do wanna join the Air Force, the only thing that you can really do at that point is make sure that you are the best candidate possible when talking to that recruiter. They have a lot on their plate, and you wanna make things as easy as possible because that increases your chance of them actually talking to you. Second reason, you could be blacklisted under the Air Force system for recruiters. I don't think they really have a blacklist necessarily, but if you've ever gone through the process of joining the Air Force or gone through MEPS, or even before you've gone to MEPS and you've started talking to them, if you're planning on joining the Air Force, they start creating a profile for you so they know all of your information. So if you have worked with previous recruiters before and you were a pain in the butt to work with, or you had an attitude, or you treated the recruiter like crap, or you tried to tell the recruiter how it was gonna be, or say you were all the way through the process and you got a job offer and you denied it and you got depth discharged, all of that information is in your records. If a recruiter is not contacting you back, it might be that they've already deemed you not a good candidate for the Air Force and they don't want to work Work with you. They're documenting all the stuff that you give them, all the information that you tell them, the way that you act towards them. A lot of people think it's the recruiter's job to get them the job that they want. The Air Force is paying that recruiter to do their job. That recruiter does not work for you. They have orders from their officers above them and from the Air Force as a whole. They have a mission, orders that they need to follow. And those orders are to get people into the Air Force in the jobs that the Air Force needs. Now, if you come into depth and you're like, I only want this job, that's all I'm taking, I'm not taking anything else. The problem with that, one of the core values of being an airman is service before self. And if you come in with the attitude that says, I refuse to put service before self, you're already showing the recruiter that you're not gonna be a good airman. So if you've already denied a job contract, you already told the Air Force, I do not embody what your core values are. And your recruiter is not trying to screw you over. And the recruiter is trying to help you get into the Air Force. It might not be what you need, but it is what the Air Force needs. And at the end of the day, if you really wanna serve in the Air Force, then you need to put service before self. Number three is you might not be the best prospect for the Air Force. That doesn't mean that it's forever. It doesn't mean that it's permanent, but you just might not be what the Air Force is looking for right now. You could have debt problems. You could have criminal past problems, drug problems. You could not meet the ASVAB requirements, right? There's multiple reasons why you wouldn't be considered a top candidate for the Air Force. And if you want your recruiter to really want to work with you, you need to work to be the best recruit that that recruiter is talking to. So some of these things are things that you can change or you might need to wait out for a little while. They wanna to talk to the people that are ready to go to MEPS and ready to go to basic training right away. The biggest thing for them is putting in recruits that are fully qualified. Your recruiter might be ignoring you because you have a few things that you need to tie up on your own. You need to buckle down and take care of the things that need to be taken care of so your recruiter can look at you and say, this is a top tier prospect and I am ready to work with this person. And my fourth reason for why a recruiter might be ignoring you is they literally might not even be there, might be on vacation, they might take leave, they need to take a break. They earn 30 days of vacation time a year through the Air Force. But there also are other times where your recruiters are just super busy. They could be out scouting around at different high schools trying to get recruits. 
So they might not be in the office for a week because they decided to take that week to hop around different high schools and do presentation. They could be in the middle of a change. New recruiters will come in, old ones will go out. Sometimes those don't really match up that well. Most of the time they're gonna try to have an overlap, but even if there is an overlap, sometimes you might have a new recruiter come in. They're taking all the things that a recruiter that has been there for four years, because that's how long a recruiting duty is, is a four year stint, but their replacement coming in has zero experience being a recruiter but they're taking on all of the responsibilities that a four-year recruiter just completed. And they have to start up right away with that. And then also on top of that, try to be working with new people. So it can be very overwhelming for a brand new recruiter because they're also trying to learn all the rules and see how the area is because they might've just moved there. So they're getting a house, they're moving their family there possibly. Odds are there's probably hundreds of people in your area that are interested in joining the Air Force, but your recruiter only has time to talk to a select few. Try to be proactive with it and shoot an email, leave a voicemail, wait a few days or wait a week or two, do it again, but don't try to call your recruiter and email them every single day. They might be on vacation. How annoyed would you be to get back from vacation? One person called you 28 times. Oh, heck no, I don't wanna mess with this person. But if I got back and I had two voicemails from the same person over a two week period, you know, that's a lot more manageable. Don't be that crazy stalker type person. Give your recruiter some space, be persistent, but space it out where it makes sense. Well, those are my four reasons why recruiters might ignore you. They're possibly could be more reasons than that, but those are the main reasons that I usually would see. So be persistent, push towards your dream, make sure you're the best candidate for the Air Force because that's what the Air Force wants. They want to put in the best people that they can. Set yourself up to be one of those people and you shouldn't have any problems. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and if you really wanna say thank you and help us out here at Airman Vision, become a channel member. The link is in the description below. 